Previously on GCN, Ali bought the cheapest used Pinarello in the UK and rode of the Stelvio Pass. But now it's time to get rid of that head tube extender, put on a few mods and give this bike a clean and a service. Can I stop doing that voice now? Yeah, I'll put a guy in now. Oh, fantastic. So here it is, the Pinarello Uno Carbon, a bike which Ollie bought for 500 of your finest Great British pounds on Facebook Marketplace. So we're gonna upgrade some of the components of it, starting with this blooming awful steerer tube extender. Not only does it look terrible, it's also gonna make the handling of the bike terrible as well. The solution, if you do need a more relaxed geometry bike, is to simply buy one that's got the position set up ready for you. Now to remove it, we're gonna use a couple of Allen keys, remove the handlebars from the stem, remove the stem from the extender, remove the extender from the bike, and then put it all back together so that it looks like it should have done in the first place. Let's get to it. There's only one place for this. Oh, there's a GTN mug in there, weird. So now that I've got all that monstrosity off, I can actually remove the rest of the spacers underneath here and just inspect all of the carbon steerer tube to make sure there's no sort of cracks or stress damage through there. All looks to be okay. So in that case, the space is back down. I'm probably gonna have to put a couple of these back on and then that can go back on there. It's still an incredibly short stem for what you'd have on a road bike, but we haven't spent any extra money. We've now made it back to how it should have been. Boom. So in terms of the bar tape, the first thing we need to do is peel these rubber hood covers back. That gets those out of the way, so we're not having to wrestle with those. Then at the top, you can see we've got this electrical tape here. Most bar tape will be finished with some kind of electrical tape or little stick around it to make it look nice. So if we start at the top, you can either use scissors or a knife to carefully cut the electrical tape, peel it back, and then unwrap the bar tape all the way around, finishing down at the end. And then you can also pop this bar end plug out. Sometimes you can get it out with your hands. Sometimes you might have to use a flat-headed screwdriver just to lever that out. And then we'll be ready to put the new stuff on. When you get your new bar tape out of the box, you're gonna have two rolls, one for the left side, one for the right side. It's also buried inside the packet, you're gonna have some fresh bar end plugs and some nice little stickers or tape to go over the, uh, the ends when you finish it. Now the trick to doing your bar tape is you always start at the end, you tuck half of it in so that the bar end plug can help hold it in place, wrap it all the way around, make sure you do a little special loop the loop around the shifter so you don't have any of this silver band or clamp exposed. Carry on all the way around to the top, and then you can take your scissors, cut the tape at the correct angle, tape it down, and you should, provided you do a good job and take your time, have some nice looking bar tape. Now it is a job which does take a bit of time, patience, and most importantly, practice. Ollie tells me this bike was originally specced with 105 back in 2013 when the bike was launched. But since then, we've had a couple of changes and upgrades. So the crank and the derailleurs have been upgraded to Ultegra, happy days. And we've got Tiagra brakes. Now I don't know if it originally came with these or they've just been replaced from the 105 ones. And we've got the 105 shifters. And when this bike was new, they also had a Campagnolo Veloci version as well. Now, while that is working its magic, cleaning that chain up nice, let's set to removing the wheels and uh, installing the shiny new ones. So I've just given the bike a quick wipe down looking pretty good, nice and shiny. And while I'm waiting for the ultrasonic cleaning tank to finish, let me tell you why we're cleaning this bike up and why we're upgrading it. Well, actually, before we get to that part, it's me doing it at Ollie. Ollie decided to be a little bit unwell, so I've stepped in to sort him out. I'm in bits. <laughs> the reason we're doing all of this 
is because this very night, Simon Richardson, Mark Threlfall from GTN and myself are racing at Castle Coombe Circuit to see just how well we can do on our rather incredible 500 pound bikes. And if you want to see how we get on in the race, head over to GCN and check that video out. And um, well, fingers crossed, this bike goes well. Right, well I'm waiting for the chain to dry. Onto our wheels next. So, these are the wheels that came in the bike. They're okay, they're fairly entry level and the kind of spec of wheel that we would see supplied on lots of bikes as an OEM or original equipment manufacturer component. So we're gonna switch these out for these, a Shimano RS wheel. And these are along the lines of a 105 level wheel set. We've got sort of bladed spokes, a few upgrades in terms of like the machining on the hub, a bit lighter, and then fitted to these, we're gonna have our Pirelli P0 race tires. These are gonna be set up with an inner tube to help save on costs because if I set them up tubeless, I'd splash out a bit more on the tires, then I have to buy valves, I have to buy wheels that are tubeless compatible. Plus, I haven't even had to buy inner tubes. I can just reuse what I'm taking out of the old stuff. Right, let's set to work getting these fitted onto the bike. Right, once the chain's dry, which seems pretty good, we'll give it an extra wipe over with a clean cloth, refit it back to the bike, wipe it all over again to make sure that cleaning fluid is out when the chain's dry. Then we can apply our fancy pants chain lube. Now you don't have to use a chain lube like this. This is designed as a race lube. So presumably later on tonight when Mark Threlfall is racing this bike, well, if he goes and wins, I mean, maybe we can just put it down to this chain lube. Who knows? Saddle next. Now the bike has got an Adamo TT saddle fitted, an unusual choice, and I suspect it was to try and help make the previous owner comfy because they'd been putting all their weight back onto the saddle with this crazy high handlebar setup. Now, the great thing about upgrading your saddle is that there's some really good bargains to be had if you look around and buy used or secondhand. The reason for that is because when lots of people buy a brand new bike, the first thing they'll change is the saddle to fit the one they know they get on with and they've used previously. So that means you can quite often find a almost brand new saddle for a really good price. Now, the saddle I'm fitting today is this. It's a Sedl Italia, or Sell Italia even, Model X Green Superflow. We actually just had it laying around at GCN Mega Base. So, all that remains, fit it on. Ready? Three, two, one. Well, that was easy. Uh, happy days, don't do that anymore. Right, all that remains is to drop this bike back in the work stand, check the gears over, job done, happy days, see you at the end. Right, and that's that, job done. Bike's looking incredible, it all works nicely, it's been revamped, ready for a new lease of life, ready for Mark to put it through its paces. And the best part when you're upgrading your bike like this is that all of the stuff that we've removed, you can then look to sell to recoup some of the costs on what you've invested upgrading your bike. Right, anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a big thumbs up. And do let me know what you think of this bike in the comments section down below. And don't forget, if you want to see it in action, along with my cheap bike and size cheap bike, head over to GCN and check that video out. See you later.